This is really backs to the wall time. It is high risk surgery, there's no doubt about that. The dangerous bit is the most I don't think I'll die on, on the operating table. Chris O'Brien is battling brain cancer. He knows it's incurable, but he's not giving up. This is actually bigger than I predicted. So today, he's risking it all. I'm taking away a little bit of normal brain here, in fact. This is radical, dangerous surgery, a last-ditch attempt to win some precious time. This, this is the last go at this, there's no doubt about that. So this is, you know, we, we probably won't get another go at this. And that's Chima Bolt right there, isn't it? So many times, Chris O'Brien has been the surgeon with the patient's life in his hands. It's almost impossible to believe that today, Chris's life is in the hands of his colleagues. Chris knows that this operation will absolutely determine his future. What a terrific day, Chris. It's absolutely glorious. We are the luckiest people on earth. <laughs> Chris O'Brien is the most positive man I've ever known. That's, that's interesting. You consider yourself lucky. But how could you call yourself unlucky and be doing this? When we met in January, Chris had already had his first bout of major surgery and weeks of chemotherapy, yet you wouldn't know it. I've got nothing but positive thoughts about the future, but nothing but positive thoughts about the people and things around me. I still have things to do, so yeah, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. Over the next few months, I saw this determination tested to the limit as Chris faced the devastating ups and downs of life with cancer. So you got some petrol in the tank. Shall we uh, have a race? Yeah. You up for it, James? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Don't make me look bad now. <laughs> you do get a wet bum. Yeah. <laughs> if you said to me, look, this is my last go. I've got one life. I'm not ready to go yet. It's the cruelest irony. Professor Chris O'Brien is himself a leading cancer surgeon. The skin may look normal. Most of us know him from Nine's dramatic real-life medical show, RPA. So we just need to protect the skin of this arm. Now at 55, the doctor has become the patient. I think a lot of our viewers will get a shock when they see Professor Chris O'Brien without his hair. I'd love to be around in 10 years' time complaining of being a bald man. <laughs> Last November, after returning from an overseas trip, Chris suddenly developed severe headaches and nausea. His wife, Gail, was worried and took him to his own hospital, RPA. The diagnosis was immediate, a malignant brain tumour needing urgent surgery. And Gail and I had a horrible, horrible night. That Sunday night I came home where we just, we cried, cried all night. And even, even recalling it, I, I'm sort of filled with emotion because and we've moved on from that, but it was, it was the, the, the horror, for, from Gail's point of view, of, this, of her whole world um, collapsing. <laughs> That's difficult days. I know when I wake up in the morning it's going to be a difficult day. It's a good idea not to go to church sometimes. <laughs> 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 I get a bit melancholy. Mm. can't imagine life without him. Mm. But you won't have life without me. I mean, I <laughs> Chris hasn't worked since the operation. Courses of radiotherapy and chemo have sapped his strength. But the upside is more time with his family, which means plenty of teasing from daughter Juliet and younger son James. It's just been every day, day in, day out. We're all at home when usually Dad wouldn't be home very much. Mm. <laughs> but I, th I think that's been valuable, don't you? Yeah. Everything has really put us out of our comfort zone. <laughs> but we're seeing too much of each other. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'll have Dad. to go back to work. Dad, <laughs> you know, I love you and all, but... <laughs> the air of uncertainty means every family milestone takes on even greater significance. Like the day Chris's eldest son, Adam, graduated from the New South Wales Police Academy. Hope I can find him. Addy! G'day. I couldn't be a prouder parent, and Gail's the same, and 
Um, it's a very, <laughs> very emotional day. I don't know why I'm so emotional, but that's the way it is, and we're, we're just we're proud and delighted to be here and to take part in this. It's just wonderful. Adam, you said this was very much about your dad today, wasn't it? Since dad got sick, I wanted to do it for him. Why did you want to do it for your dad? He, I know he wants to see me achieve my dream, and this is what it is. So, here I am. <laughs> OK, you ready? Ready. One, two, three. Don't go and buy black clothes. <laughs> Don't do that. Right. Right. OK? The warmth and passion in Chris's own family life is something he's always managed to carry over into his career as a surgeon. Don't all get depressed. I've upset you now. <laughs> anyway, can't do much more than that, can we? At this stage? Yeah, but we, we're, not, yeah. we're not giving up or anything no, like no, that, no, OK? No, no. And all keep smiles on your faces. OK? Because no, no. I'll get depressed if you get depressed. <laughs> what people want from the outset is to be embraced by a positive doctor who says, Peter, we've got a bad diagnosis here, but let's get you fixed up. Let's sort it out. Let's get you onto treatment and let's get you fixed and, and embrace the person. Now, Chris needs the same positive approach in his own treatment. His first operation in November removed 95% of the tumour. But this is a relentless, aggressive cancer. How was it? Three months down the track, yes. it's time for a scan to see if it's grown back. I think there's still there's some activity just below the main cavity. But diminished, do you think? I think it's diminished compared to the original study. <laughs> it's good news this time. I don't want to be bashed over the head with the, with the potential outcomes. <laughs> I will seek my own outcome. I will seek nothing but an absolutely successful outcome. Even though as a doctor, well, I don't want to bash you over the head with it, but there's a 1% to 2% survival rate, or put another way, 98% will die. Yep. Well, why can't I be in the 1% to 2%? It's not zero. Uh, why can't I be, be in, in that group? You get one go and you grasp it with both hands and you don't stop. And the thing I've learnt is you never, ever give up. It seems remarkable, but in the midst of the battle with his own disease, Chris O'Brien is crusading for a better deal for all cancer victims. Cutting edge clinical care integrated with the latest research and support and education, all in the one venue. His dream is to establish specialised cancer units throughout the country. At this recent dinner, he raised $4 million. You're on a crusade as well, aren't you? It is a crusade, and if I can leverage off my illness to push this agenda, then I think it's appropriate that I do it. I don't think anyone in Australia should have to go overseas for this care. But all too soon, Chris's public campaign is interrupted by a new crisis in his personal battle to survive. Yep. The cancer has come back stronger than ever. It's time for even more radical surgery. Yeah, you guys come in. This operation may paralyse him, even rob him of his sight. And that might prevent me from reading. Which you love so much. Which I love, which I really love. But I'm prepared to accept that. I guess, Peter, without sounding too gloomy and doomy, things aren't looking good at all, really. I mean, he's got the worst type of cancer known to mankind. Chris has turned to a surgeon uh, he, renowned for his aggressive very, approach. Very Charlie Teo is prepared to do what other surgeons won't. I've promised Chris that I'm going to be as aggressive as I can here because it's his only chance of uh, surviving the year, possibly being paralysed versus wanting to stay alive for as long as possible. And throw into the mix, you're a colleague and a mate. Yeah, there's a bit of emotion here as well. But, uh... Good luck, Charlie. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Thank you. For Dr Teo and two other neurosurgeons, it's intensive, painstaking work. Take the wrong tissue and it would be disaster. But they need to get every last bit. But at this point here, I can actually be very radical. Scissors, but he needs it. I mean, if we're gonna, if we're gonna have any chance at all. It looks like you're taking a hell of a lot of tissue out, Charlie. I am, Peter, I am. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or not, but 
This is what I would want someone to do for me. So effectively, are you trying to give Chris extra time? That's exactly what we're trying to do. And for all we know, the cure for brain cancer might be just around the corner. After three hours, the operation's okay. over. Okay, done. Looks great. Okay. Lights on, thanks. Chris, we're all finished. Operation's all over. You're just waking up. Just gonna pop a little mask on, okay? Feeling okay? Good man. Good man. Went very well, Chris. Gives you a thumbs up. That's brilliant. Chris, you moving? Oh, fantastic. Oh, good boy. See the other side. Wiggle your fingers. And wiggle your toes. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I think you're going to be very happy. Really happy. Very, very radical. So a normal brain. Took a normal rim of brain, everything. I think you're going to be really happy, also. Good. Horrible. No, no, no. No, no. Actually, it didn't look too bad. In fact, some of the areas look pretty low grade ish, so. Yeah. That's all good news. Okay, son. I'll go and tell her to go. Okay. Right. Hello. Charlie. Nice to meet you. Hey, how are you? Well, oh, things have gone really well. Yeah, really, really good. He'll be able to go home tomorrow. Yeah, no, no problems. Mm. Party's racing. Yeah. No, uh, well, you know, it comes with no guarantees, but at no, least no. we've given him a fighting chance. <laughs> the operation has given Chris O'Brien the reprieve he was hoping for. But he knows only too well the odds are against him. Right now, though, there's so much living to be done. Perhaps it's because Chris has seen so many others struggle for life that he's learned to value every precious moment. I'm incredibly lucky I've got time with my beautiful wife, with my children. I can continue to teach them and influence them and mentor them. I want to learn more. I want to play the guitar a bit better, have time to practice and have a great happy life going forward and, and desire that it's as long, as long as it can be. Well, everyone wishes you that long, long life. Thanks, Peter. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.